Good morning, everyone. Welcome to What's Up Wednesday. I hope everybody's having a fabulous day so far. My name is Erin, and today we're going to be going over the IDX setup. So we'll be going through how to get your IDX all set up um, and showing you some different techniques and things to do with the IDX. So we'll have that. Um, some things that we have that are new, I'm so excited to share this with you. Um, most of you have probably, if not all of you, have gotten this email, which is going to be the new brochures email. So we have a new flyer template. It's going to be our number four. And then also we have some other different things, too, that you can do with a flyer. So I want to go through those real quick and show those. This is such a cool option. Um, with Fire 4, I'll show you how that works. Um, if you have a co-listing agent added in and there's also a lender added in, it will display the listing agent, the co-listing agent, as well as the loan officer. So that is going to be a good little flyer if you're choosing to use that as an option for, for, the, um, for the flyer option. So just take a, we'll take a peek at that, look at that. Um, so we do have some new flyer options. Also, there are two finance flyers completed as well. So if you are a loan officer in the system and you've done your OH flyer setup, you'll see that there's two finance flyer options that you can choose from going through the system. So uh, you should have gotten this email, new brochure, so we'll go through and I'm going to pull up a property website so we can take a look at these flyers and show you what they look like. I'm just going to go view a website here. Um, and then we're going to go to print brochures. Now, with the different flyer options, you'll see here, so I am zoomed out a little bit so you can see all of the different flyer options. We have seven different options to choose from. So this is a cool thing to have. If you have your OH flyer set up as a lender, on the property websites for your agents, you'll see payment flyer two or finance flyer one and finance flyer two. So you'll have that, the lender information is displayed, the agent information is displayed. Um, we also have it to where you can choose this little drop down. If you hover over the different flyer options, you can uh, see the different the different flyer options. So say I want to do flyer two and I want to do price reduced. It has a little banner that's populated on there automatically for you. Also, if you have an open house, it will give you an open house option. So I can go in and add in my open house dates and then it will give me a little drop down that says open house as well. So Flyer 4, this is the one that we were talking about that has, um, it has the listing agent and it also has the mortgage information and then also if you have a co-listing agent, it will have all three options on there. So this is a cool flyer if you're looking to have all three people um, available on there. And then, um, yeah, so just going through the different flyer options, like I said, you can choose just listed price reduced, or if you have open house dates, then you can also have an open house banner that populates on there. So these flyers are so awesome. We've done some revamping on this. If you're sponsored and have a loan officer sponsoring you, and loan officers, if you have your OH flyer set up, set up in the system, then that will be your finance flyer one and finance flyer two as well. So these flyers are so awesome. They're automatically generated when the property gets added into the system. So there's really no need for anything to be done except adding into the property into the system, and that's it. You get all the different flyer options created for you. So the flyers are so awesome. I'm very excited to have those available for you. Um, again, if you are looking to display your co-listing agent with you, Flyer 4 is going to be the best option. Um, as a lender, you are displayed on all of the property uh, flyers, I think, except like one or two. So that's available for you, too. Um, so we have the new flyers. Next week, we're going to be focusing on the feedback system. Um, that will actually be hosted by Tara. I'm going to be out of town, so she's going to be my little guest speaker and showing you guys the feedback system. So if you're interested in attending and learning about the feedback request or the feedback system, she'll tell you more about that. Uh, keep in mind, each week, all of our What's Up Wednesdays are recorded. So if you need to ever go back and watch them or have a recap or anything like that, you can always visit our YouTube channel. I'll pull up that link here real quick so you guys have that fresh in your email or fresh in your chat box. Um, you can always go to this YouTube link here and view the YouTube channels. I'm posting it in the chat box right now for you through GoToWebinar. 
Uh, you can always go back and watch any of the What's Up Wednesdays. If you have not done so already, be sure to subscribe. You'll see this little subscribe button here. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel so you get reminders when the videos have been uploaded. So that way if you want to watch it again, you happen to miss one Wednesday, you always have those videos fresh in your email and fresh in your YouTube channel. So be sure to subscribe. Um, other than that, we're still working on the Neighborhood Watch. I promise you that's going to be done sooner than later. Um, it's just there's a lot more design and programming than we had anticipated. So it's taking a little bit longer than expected, but we are getting it done and we're making great progress. So as soon as that's done, I promise we'll do a huge rollout on it. We'll do a webinar and show you guys how to use that because it's going to be a really cool feature. For those of you who are not, um, who are new or haven't heard about the Neighborhood Watch, it's going to be a section where you can actually upload your mailing list into the system. You can choose to select postcards or door hangers. And then if you do the postcard option, you have an option for us to send them out for you. So we're doing your mailing for you. It's going to be a simple way. You upload your mailing list, select who you want to send it to, and then we do the rest for you. You'll also have an option to select the ones, uh, the postcards or door hangers that you want, and then we will mail them to you as well. So you can choose to do either or. Uh, so that's going to be a really cool thing that we'll have available for you. So with that being said, we're working on a bunch of new things. So we'll, um, as those become available, we'll definitely let you know and keep you in the loop with that. So let's get started with today's topic. IDX. So if those of you who are newer to real estate or if you're a loan officer or maybe somebody who isn't too familiar with IDX, what it is is it's Internet Data Exchange. It's going to be a property search that the agents can actually add on to your personal website or onto their personal website for them to be able to have consumers go and search properties on the actual MLS. So we work directly with each MLS, and if for any reason you don't see your MLS, let us know. We um, do it by request base only, so we reach out to the MLS and see what we can do about getting the direct feed so we can have that IDX available for you. Um, so just give us a call if for any reason you don't see your MLS listed, and we'll cover that right now. So to get your IDX set up in the system, you will go to your setup options, which is going to be this little gear icon here in the right-hand corner. You'll see that you have a, a little box here that says IDX Setup. So we're going to go ahead and click here and click on IDX Setup. Now, just to give you a little heads up, there is a small fee for the IDX. We do have to kind of pass on some costs that the uh, MLS makes us do to kind of just stay in compliance and make sure we're, you know, staying compliant with every little thing that we have. So if we don't stay in compliant, then we lose our feed, and then that means we can't provide that MLS for you. So we just have to make sure we're staying in compliance. If you have questions about fees or costs or anything like that, let us know. We can give you some information on that. The most average price is $11, um, but each MLS is different, so the, the price could be a little bit higher. Um, so when you get to this section, you'll go to your IDX setup. Um, because I have my special security settings in my account, I don't have to enter in a credit card. But when you go through and set up the IDX, you'll see IDX credit card here. So you'll need to enter in your credit card information in order to get that set up. So it is a monthly fee, um, and then that will just come out on a monthly basis to cover the IDX fee. Keep in mind, you do not have to use IDX if you don't want to. It is something that you can choose as an extra add-on. Also, some MLSs do provide you with a frameable IDX link. So if they do provide you with that, you can also use that on the websites, which I'll cover in just a moment as well. So setting up your IDX search. What you would want to do once you have your credit card information all set, entered in and all ready to go, you'll click here on this Add New button here. When you click on Add New, it's going to give you an, an option to add in a new IDX search. So from here, you would go through and you'll choose your MLS. So I'm going to go down and select California Regional MLS because that's our local board here. And then what I can do is do a search nickname. Now this is just for you to be able to um, kind of keep track of your different MLS searches. The cool thing is with that fee that we charge, you can have as many searches as you want within the system. So that's a cool thing. If you have one MLS, you can have multiple searches for that, for that specific MLS, which is awesome. So I'm just going to do um, new property search here. 
And then I'm going to go ahead and you can select your starting zip code, state, or uh, city if you want to. So I'm just going to do our local zip code here. You can choose to have it show up on a grid, on a map, or on a list option. So it kind of gives you some different view options that will default with these. Now this is going to be the default settings when you go through and you set up this IDX search on the personal website. So you can go through and you can select. I personally think the grid looks good. We've actually revamped it a little bit and made it look really awesome. So I want to show you that too. And then also you can choose your search radius. So you can go up to 100 miles if you want to, or you can stay within a short little radius. I usually like to stay under 10. I think 5 is a fair number. When you do set up this search, it doesn't mean that they can only search for homes in this specific radius. It just means this is where the default mapping option is going to have as a starting point. When they go to search, and when I say they, I mean the consumer, when they go to search on your personal website, they still have an option to search anywhere throughout that MLS and that search, but this is just a starting point. So this will display the, um, the listings within the five mile radius. You also have some optional values, which is just going to be like show, show homes below a uh, million dollars or show homes below 500,000. Um, maybe you want to show homes above 500,000, but no greater than 750,000. So this kind of gives you an option to go through and, and really do your options as you choose. So now that I have this filled out, I'm going to go ahead and hit save here. And now my new property search has been done. Now keep in mind, most MLSs do require a form to be filled out. So you can click here on this form button. Um, you can usually download the IDX form. If not, sometimes you have to contact the MLS directly in order to get the form. You do have to download the IDX form though and make sure you sign it and everything is up to date on here. So be sure to do that and upload it. Once we have your IDX form uploaded, our IDX specialist does get notified, and from there she can go ahead and make your website live once you have it all set up. So the form is really, really, really important. Make sure you have that form filled out. So we have our IDX all ready to go and all set up. So now what I want to do is I want to add this on to my personal website. So I'm going to go to my personal tab here at the very top of Agent Marketing, and then I'm going to go to Personal Website. So now I have my agent website set up here. So now I want to add this property search onto my actual website here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this little menu here. It's going to be the little bullet point icon. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to actually go ahead and click on add page here. So I'm going to do add page. And then from here, you have a few different options of things you can do. You'll go to your agent pages here and you're going to go ahead and click on IDX property search. Now, if you get a frameable IDX link from your, uh, from your board, from your local MLS board, then you'll click here on this outside ADX, uh, IDX property search URL. And then from here, you can paste in your URL and then have it uh, open up on your actual agent marketing page. Since we have our IDX set up within the system, I'm going to go ahead and just do our default IDX property search. And then I'm going to go ahead and do new property search here. So now I can choose to do um, a different tab here. So I'm going to do search home for sale. And then I'm going to take away that page title and leave that blank. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit add. So I have my menu text in here. You can choose to do a page title if you want to. And then you also have it to where you can have your property search selected. So now I'm going to hit add here. And now I've got my search homes for sale. So I'm going to Bring this up here, go to the very top here, because I want this to be the very first thing that my consumers see when they go to view my website. So now I have my search homes for sale. So now if I go in here and click on view website, it's going to pull up with the property here that we have. Now we have this cool little IDX box here where consumers can actually type in their city, state, or zip. They can do the radius, the price, bedroom, bath, and hit search. This will actually search the MLS data as well. And I'll show you how to set that up in just a second. So if we go to search for homes for sale, we actually will have this available now. It has all of those homes in my area that I actually have specified. So it pulls up the IDX right away and has all of these different homes listed here. So this is a really cool thing that we have available for you being able to have that IDX search. 
So it's cool. Um, the good thing is, is if you click on a listing, it does a cool little slide out, so you never lose your spot. So the consumer can say, oh, yeah, I want to look at this one instead. And so now it will just pull over to that. Wow, that picture is beautiful. Um, so then it will just pop over to that other property. So that way they don't have it to constantly refresh and then scroll down to the bottom and all of that stuff. It will just plop out. And then you can choose to hit close, too. So that's setting up the IDX on the personal website. Pretty simple. Um, so now I want to show you how to set up that little search bar. So we have this on our website. Now keep in mind, this is only going to work for layout seven, layout nine, and 10. So keep that in mind. This little search box only works for specific templates that we have on the system. So I'm gonna go back into agent marketing and I'm gonna go back to my personal tab where my personal website is listed and we're gonna go to this little tool icon here. So this is gonna be the little wrench icon. And then you have an option for the, um, so you have your Perl options here, and then you'll see that it has a simple heading search or there's the advanced, um, the advanced search. With the advanced search, that's going to give you the bedroom, bath, the square feet, all of that. If you choose to just do the simple heading, I'm gonna save it real quick and show you exactly what it looks like. So this is the advanced. You'll see that it has all the price, the bedroom, bath. Um, and then if we do the simple, it's just gonna give you the city and state. So you can choose to do either or. Now keep in mind, again, this is only going to work on layouts 10, nine, and seven. So you can only use this little search box on those specific templates. So keep that in mind. Um, so you can go through and choose to do whichever one you like. I personally like the advanced. I just think it looks cooler. It's got more information on there. And then also through the tool section for your website, you also have a bunch of different options to turn on and off through here too. So just a little um, side note there. Um, so that's setting up the IDX on the personal website. Now keep in mind too, we do have an extra add-on for the IDX and that's our Facebook IDX search. So I do have my business page here set up. You'll see that it has the IDX search all set up already. So I'll show you how to set this up and use this as an option. Now this goes based off of your default IDX setting that you have under your MLS or under your IDX setup. So going back to the gear icon here, we're gonna go ahead and go back to the IDX setup. Now you'll see here, if you're setting up multiple IDX searches, you will have one that is going to be your default. Now if you hover over this, this will show you what it's going to be. So this is going to be your default search. Now you can always go through and rearrange. So if you wanted this new one to be your new default, you just click and drag them in the order that you want them to show up on. So you'll have your default. That's what will populate onto your Facebook page for your IDX search. Now to set up the Facebook IDX search, you must have a business page in your Facebook account in order to do this. So you'll go ahead and go back to the little gear icon here. So we're gonna go to the gear icon. And then we're gonna go to options. Now through the options section, you'll see that you have two sets of eyeballs. So you'll have one, which is going to be go to your Facebook app, which is going to display, display all of your active listings. Or you have the second one, which is going to be the IDX search setup. So you can click on this set of eyeballs. And what it's going to do is it's going to pull up this little section here that says add app to your page. When you click on add app to your page, it will give you a drop down menu for you to be able to select your business page. Because I already have this app installed, I don't need to go through and do this. You'll literally click on the drop down menu, select your business page, and you're done. That's it. So then you can go in and you can view your actual business page here and see all of the listings from that IDX search. So this is a really cool feature to have available for you to be able to use. You do have to have a business page set up and you do have to have the IDX set up in order to get this onto your, your Facebook page. So that's setting up that, pretty simple, easy to do. If you get to this point and you have questions on setting up your business page or setting up the IDX, let us know. Again, our support hotline number is always available to help and always can answer any questions too um, that can be helpful. So any questions that I can answer about IDX or being able to use that? Let's see here. 
Um, so if for any reason you do not see your MLS, be sure to call our support hotline number at the top of our website and we can look into getting your, your MLS going. Um, if you don't see it on the list, like I said, we do it on request based only, so maybe not an agent has requested that. So just give us a call and we can look into it. Um, there was a question asking if there is a fee. Um, if you are a lender, the fee is going to be for your agent. They will have to put in their own credit card in order to be able to get the IDX going. So if you're a lender sponsoring agents, there's no cost to you for the IDX as a lender. Um, it will actually be something your agents will pick up the cost of. Um, to use the uh, frameable IDX link, there is no charge. So if you go to your MLS and get that free IDX frameable link from your MLS, there's no charge in agent marketing to add that on to your website. Um, sorry, just going through and answering this question, these questions. Um, is the IDX char charged per search or is it a one fee for IDX access? So it's going to be a one-time monthly fee for that MLS. Now, if you belong to multiple MLSs and you want to have multiple searches for, say, like CR MLS and then another MLS, then you'd have to pay for each MLS, but you can have unlimited searches under those MLS. So if you're just using one MLS, you can have multiple searches and it's just that one-time monthly $11 fee. Um, if, there, if you as an agent have your own website outside of agent marketing, unfortunately you will not be able to use the IDX. You have to use it within the system. Um, in order to get started with the IDX and the MLS and all that stuff, you have to use the websites within our system. Um, if you have a frameable IDX link, can you still do the Facebook feature? Um, that is a good question. I'm not sure. I don't think so, just because you have to set up the IDX within the system, um, because we go based off of the default settings here. Um, but you might be able to contact Facebook and see if there's a way that you can put in the frameable link through Facebook directly. Um, how do you find out if our MLS is on IDX? So what you do is you can go here to add new. So if you're um, not sure how to find your MLS, you can go to MLS source um, under the IDX search and you can choose the list of MLSs. So as you can see, we have a good amount of MLSs already. If for any reason you don't see it, just give us a call and then we can uh, look into it for you. Um, can you use your own domain name for your personal website? Yes. If you purchase the domain, say, from like GoDaddy or a different um, website host company outside of agent marketing, you do have an option to point your domain to your website through agent marketing. To do that, you'll go to your personal tab here at the very top. Sorry, I got to get rid of the chat box here. Uh, you'll go to the personal tab at the very top and then go to domain management. And you'll see here it says notice, if you bought your domain name somewhere else, click the tour sign for instructions. So you click on this little tour sign and then it will give you step-by-step um, -step instructions on how to get that pointed to your website within the system. So definitely really easy to do so. Um, let's see. Sorry, I'm just reading through some of the questions. Um, so if you have a section that says our MLS says broker by broker only, I believe that we can only have the broker's listings displayed. Um, if you Again, if you have questions about that, I would recommend reaching out to our IDX specialist, and she can reach, be reached at our customer service hotline number at the top. So just call in and ask for our IDX specialist, and she can answer any questions that you may have about the fees and the IDX information. Um, how do we go about contacting about you contacting our MLS if it's not available? Again, you'll have to reach out to the IDX specialist to get a request put in, and then what we'll do is reach out to the MLS about getting that IDX going. So definitely reach out. Again, our support number is at the top of our website, so feel free to call, and then we can go ahead and get that going. Um, sorry, just reading through some of these other questions here. Uh, so there was a question asking about the email drip campaigns, asking if we can actually push it down. As of right now, no, but I will reach out to our programmers and see if there's a way that we can do that. Um, the question was creating a campaign under a sponsor account and then pushing it down to all of the agents' accounts. 
Um, as of right now, we don't have anything available like that, but that is something I will suggest and see if we can do that. Um, so any other questions? Anything else I can answer for you? Uh, so there was a question asking if you do the IDX outside the outside IDX link, will it allow the advanced options to work? No, it would have to be done through agent marketing in order to do that. Um, so let's see, how do we get to the flyers? So you go to your property tab here at the top and then you'll go to properties. And to get to the flyers, you'll view your property specific website here. And then once you view your property specific website, you'll see a section that says print brochures. And then you'll have access to all of the different flyer options. So it's pretty simple. Just view the property website and then go to print brochures and you'll see all the different flyer options. Any other questions I can answer? Anything else? Anything else? Um, for the IDX links, you can use them on multiple personal websites. Yes, that is definitely something you can do. Anything else? All right, and then for those of you who did turn in or tune in a little late next week, is going to be about the feedback system. Uh, Tara will be hosting next week's What's Up Wednesday. So feedback requests, definitely attend if you're interested in um, learning more about feedback requests. Definitely it's going to be important. Um, so it's uh, definitely something you can utilize and have available for you in the system. So the feedback request, really important, a great little feature that we have. So Tara will be doing What's Up Wednesday next week for the feedback request. Um, the flyers are new, so if you haven't had a chance, take a look at our flyers that we have. And um, that looks like that's it for questions. So I really appreciate each one of you showing up today. If there's anything that I didn't, that I missed or couldn't cover, definitely feel free to call our support team. The number is at the top of our website here. You'll see the help hotline. Feel free to give us a call and we can answer any questions you may have and help with anything. Thanks again, everyone. I hope you all have a fabulous rest of your Wednesday. Have a great week and we'll see you soon. Thanks, everyone.